This is an action camera. This is a regular camera. This is a compact camera. This is a big camera. This is an even bigger camera. The action camera is tiny and yet technically it films in the highest resolution of all of these, although worse quality. When I got my first real camera, I was obsessed with these tiny C-mount lenses, and I've always wanted to try putting them on an action camera to get a bit of that big camera flare in a super compact form factor. This particular action camera has a one inch sensor, more than double a GoPro's. Big sensor in a tiny camera, we like that. Now this project footage is from almost a year and a half ago, and at that point, this was the most expensive camera I'd ever bought, and I'd never opened a camera before. Nice. This was a silly idea in many regards. I should have just bought a nice lens instead. At the time, I was mostly just using the kit lens on my M50, but curiosity got the best of me, and I just went for it. The goal is to remove the sensor so I can rehouse it, and with the adhesive softened and the body cracked open, I thought I was past the hard part, but my battles with excessive glue had only just started. I was following a guide from a company called Backbone that makes modification kits for these action cameras, but their disassembly guide was for the first generation Insta360-1R, I had the 1RS, which apparently had the sensor glued in place in addition to the screws. If I scratch the sensor here, the project is basically ruined. I got one side freed, just have to work it real slow and just take off little bits as I can. I also can't really use much heat here for fear of screwing up the ribbon cable, but after a good chunk of time carefully chipping and prying... Oh, there we go. That is a sensor. Yeah, so they just applied a ton of glue across this side and over here. So now I've already done the hard stuff, the screws are out, I should be able to pull this out now. Oh no, unless they started putting glue in this too. That's not fun. Not very fun of you, Insta360. I'm betting they just started to apply glue around the edge of the lens here. So hopefully, if I just give it a... Oh, there we go. Just a little bit of persuasion. And now we can take our little sensor and we have an empty housing. The only part of this module I'm going to reuse is the sensor itself, putting it in the new backbone housing. I just need to clean up a bit of the glue to make sure the sensor sits flush. I didn't know what I was hoping to get out of this project or what my use case for this tiny camera rig would even be, but I liked the idea too much to not do it and see what happens. I've always valued the fun factor of a camera over its actual specs, and this is a prime example of that. In theory, if this works, it should be totally usable. 5.3K video with manual focus lenses, but for the price of the $600 camera and $300 mod kit, I could have just bought a ready-made, reliable camera. The dream with this rig, though, was to have super high-quality, crisp video that I can have in my pocket at all times. And also just to have a weird setup that most people have never seen before. After attaching the battery clip-in points, all I had left to do was install the infrared filter. This stops any non-visible light from reaching the sensor and screwing up the image. Then comes the C-mount plate, which allows me to screw my lenses on. With this installed, I should be able to do my first operational test and see if the camera still works at all. The nice thing is this camera has a modular design, so worst case, I just screwed up the lens module and I can get a new one. But that was the most expensive part, so here's hoping. Lens cap is on. With the trusty 35 millimeter, we should get something.
preliminary tests are a success, although a bit shaky and terrible audio. I've got to rig this thing out and then test it in proper light. With the modded lens, it doesn't fit into the cage I have. After discovering that filing this thing down would take far too long, I moved the whole setup out to the garage. This is filmed on the modded action camera. The garage was not very well lit, so this sort of functioned as an early low light test. For this shot, the action camera is actually sitting on the light switch for the garage. Positioning is definitely an advantage of a small camera. After the modifications, the cage looks pretty good and the footage does too, but we'll get a proper test when it's finished. Adding the cage to the setup will allow me to mount microphones and also add a bit of weight for some stabilization. To get audio in, I need to use this weird dongle thing, and it doesn't fit with the cage in the way. As usual, my solution is to tear it apart and start cutting stuff. It's funny to see sometimes how much wasted space there is in things like this, and how much you can minimize with a pretty simple process. Not the prettiest fix, but a simple one. I cut the cage a bit too, and now it fits beautifully. I also switched out the C-mount lens plate with a Micro Four Thirds so I can adapt a wider variety of lenses, since I can just stack a C-mount adapter on top of that. Now, from here on forward, all this footage is present day, which is why my desk is much more colorful and my Rode mic is now made of wood. I finished this project over a year ago, but I waited to make the video, and I'll explain why. This camera is definitely an oddball with its specific advantages and disadvantages. And to explain, I'm gonna take it to downtown Cleveland and do a bit of filming. The rest of the video is shot on the action camera. Am I in focus right now? Probably not. The reason I waited to make this video after finishing the project was honestly because I wasn't sure what the use case for this camera even was. I'm stuck only using manual focus lenses on it and it's tough to manual focus because the screen is so tiny, especially in combination with vintage lenses which are already finicky to focus. It's a rough combination for shooting. When I'm in studio and I can closely monitor the picture, it's totally usable but that kind of defeats the purpose of it being a small, pocketable camera entirely. Once again, not sure if I'm in focus here, but we'll roll with it. Do I recommend doing this project, modifying an action camera to take all kinds of lenses? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. It's an extremely fun piece of kit, and it's always fun to show other videographers and have them be like, what the hell is that thing? What did you do? But as for legitimate use case, it's pretty niche, honestly. A few months after I did this project, Van Nystat posted a video about a similar project where he bought a modded GoPro to take vintage lenses. And in that video, he was kind of grappling with the same issue of uh, convincing himself he needed this thing for a certain use case, but in the end, accepting that he just wanted it because he liked it. I think it's important to do kind of fun and pointless projects from time to time, as long as you're being honest with yourself about how you're spending your money and time and not convincing yourself that uh, you need something you don't. I think the battery's about to die. Thank you for your time.